Hey everybody, do really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Nor 9 Var Commons, still on Natsuiko and Mikoto's story. And we should be nearing the end, if not at the end in this episode. We'll see exactly where we are. We're going to war against Shiro Yuiga to try and end uh, Shiro Yuiga's war making. <laughs> Um, and hopefully make it so that we won't have to have any more resets. So hopefully all the other storylines will come together somewhat in this one too, and we can, um, rescue Kakeru from Shiro Yuiga's clutches, and, uh, rescue the other espers and stuff, and, you know, nobody will have to die, except for Shiro Yuiga, maybe. Alright, well let's see where the day takes us. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. The day of our departure is finally here. Ion, hmm? She is the one who gave me my powers. I wonder what she is like. <laughs> Phew. Hey. <laughs> Why do you keep running away? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Oh, that's so cute. Gotta hide him behind him. Mikoto, I'm sorry I left you alone for so long. I was busy. I do not want to be anywhere close to Ron. Who knows what that jerk might try to pull. Once everything is done, you'll have all my time. We can stay together as long as we want. I'll even listen to any requests you have. I heard that he is not an esper, but that does not make him less frightening. Mikoto... Are you listening to me? Huh? Oh, um, of course I am. Ah, uh, you knew without me even needing to say anything, right? Okay, folks, everything is ready to go. It's time for takeoff. All of us quickly boarded Natsuiko's ship and headed for the island. I don't know why, but the barrier that's surrounding the island has been taken down. For whatever reason, it's totally gone. I get a clear bead on the island with my instruments. That means we can make it to the island without needing to get on the Norn first. Nice. Oh man, really? Here, I was hoping I'd get to see that missile in action. Hey, uh, Ron, could you please get your hand away from that launch switch, please? <laughs> so, this is where you were born and raised. Yeah. It does not seem inhabited at all. There are lots of buildings, but all of them seem deserted. What a lonely island. Masamune, what are you doing here? Seemingly appearing out of nowhere, Masamune did not look particularly surprised to see us coming. All the suspicions I harbored about him on the ship came rushing back to me. His stubborn refusal to allow Sorato off the ship, his unusual reaction to the picture that I had drawn. Those weren't the only things either. There were several other things that led me to doubt him. Even after all this time, I still believe that he may have been sabotaging the world's orders. Mikoto, I figured she might have been with you. What do you mean by you? Does he mean Ron, perhaps? I destroyed the tracking device woven into her uniform. If you think everything is going to go as you planned, you're wrong, Masamune. Wait, Natsuiko and Masamune know each other. He and I are the same, you know. He is another descendant of the scientist and a resident of this island. How much have you told her, Natsuiko? I've told her everything I know. Of all of Ion's chosen ones, he was the only islander picked. Given his background, he was given the duty of leading you lot. It seems that you had your suspicions of him. You were right to, but probably not for the reasons you thought. So, that's what it was. Masamune, where is everyone? Are they okay? Yeah, this way. Kohoru ran up and threw her slim arms around me. I'm so sorry! I couldn't come and rescue you! Are you okay? You didn't get hurt, did you? It's alright, I am fine. 
a wave of guilt washed over me. Both Kohoro and Nanami had selflessly offered to help me, but I refused them. As a result, I fell prey to Ron and was suddenly torn from them. I apologize. I wish I could have responded to your message. You heard it. Yes, just once. Oh, good. Sokuya? Why? Why is he avoiding? Oops, and there he goes. Itsuki! He was real, real worried when you vanished, miss. Well, I'm sure he's just feeling a little overly emotional now, that's all. Forgive him. He does not need my forgiveness. This was my fault in the first place. I ignored all of his warnings. It was my own fault that I fell for Ron's duplicity and was shoved off the roof. Anyway, I am relieved that everyone is safe and unharmed. Wait, Kakeru and Sorata are not here. Where is Sorata? He's off talking to Ion. Oh, okay. Really? What would that kid have to say to someone like Ion? Who knows? Wait, you know about Ion, miss? Let me guess, that guy told you about her. Hey, Masa told me bits and pieces about you. So, you're the guy who kidnapped Miss, eh? Look at that crew. <laughs> Whoa! Hey! Ron's with you! Don't know who the other guy is, though. Hiya, everybody. I'm Setsu Takishima. Good to meet ya. Is he going to swiftly hit on the other two girls? Yo, good to meet you, too. Oi, don't go acting all buddy-buddy with them. <laughs> so cute. Heishi and uh, Setsu are just two friendly guys, and you just meet and hit it off. Huh? Why not? They don't look like bad people. <laughs> That's what you said about Ron, Heishi. Yeah, he still holds to that, I guess. Idiot. Have you already forgotten that they are the ones who freaking kidnapped her? Itsuki casually sauntered up to Natsuiko. He was close enough he could reach out and... Itsuki, whatever you are thinking... I'm not going to do anything. I just wanted to get a closer look at Mr. Dashing Criminal here. Hey there. So, you had to look after Miss for a while, eh? Someone as stubborn and unreasonable as her had to be a handful for you. I... I am not unreasonable! <laughs> yes, thanks for taking such good care of her. How about I trap you in an eternal hell? Oh, no. I know you. You're the one they call the Dream Merchant. You abused your powers for money. Abused? Is there a right and wrong way to use my powers? Who decides that? Move aside. I'm in no mood to talk to a petty money-grabbing opportunist. Hold it right there, both of you! Enough! Don't start any pointless fights, you two! Okay, okay... Sheesh! Uh, before you go see Ion, tell me everything that happened while I was gone, including what happened to Kageru. Poor Yuiga! Alright, it's a long story, but might as well. You should hear it too, Natsuiko. I have no interest in your Esper stories. This Esper story includes the last days and demise of Shiro Yuiga. What? His last days? Masamune quietly began to talk. It started soon after I had disappeared. Everyone searched feverishly for me, but no one could find any clues as to my whereabouts. Despite the enormity of the ship, they knew it was still an enclosed space. So, if they could not find me after searching every nook and cranny, they reasoned I must have somehow fallen off the ship. Masamune attempted to relay this to Ion, but due to some problems on her end, he was not able to get in touch with her. Since he could not contact her, Masamune took a small one-man craft and flew to meet her directly. Unfortunately, his absence left the ship wide open for Shiro Yuiga. He arrived and told everyone that I had been kidnapped. He went on to say that Ron was in league with the kidnappers. 
The first one to trust him was Kakeru. This was to be expected. Shiryuiga was his father after all. Kakeru suggested everyone go along with Shiro. Only Koharu, Senri, and Sakuya agreed. The rest stayed on the ship. Worrying over the ones who went with the stranger and obviously awaiting Masamune's return. I didn't trust that guy from the start. But what was worse was Kakeru was acting weird. Yeah, so those are the same events that happened in... Whose story was it that happened in... Oh, well, it's the same events that happened in somebody else's story. I can't think of whose it was, but it was one of the later guys that I played. He said that guy was his dad, but his dad was supposed to have kicked the bucket ages ago. Kakeru knew that, yet he totally accepted the guy as his dad without any hesitation. It felt really weird that someone as cautious as Kakeru would believe a total stranger in the blink of an eye like that. I know Yuiko's father from before too! He was the traveler who rescued me when I was little and helped me live on my own. But the traveler I knew never told me that he had any children. Like Mr. Akito, it felt really weird to me. Mr. Senri and I only went along with him because we were worried about Yuiga. It didn't take long for us to realize that we had all made a huge mistake. He told me he wanted me to use my powers in a battle. Yuiga was acting funny too. I know he was a schemer and a bully at heart, but he never did anything totally cruel to Koharu before. So, why are you two here? Once he had gotten his hands on you, Shiro Yuiga would not have let either of you escape so easily. Well, um, he died. What? It threw his entire army into a panic. We used the chaos to cover our escape. We wouldn't have made it if Toya hadn't come through. But Kakeru didn't run. He he wasn't the Yuigo we knew anymore. Oh. Who killed Shiro Yuiga? Was it the pyrokinetic? <gasps> there is no way that man would just kill over. This must be just another one of his schemes to make us think he's dead. He may still be alive. Easy, Natsuiko. Think for a minute. You used Ion's degradation to sneak Ron aboard the ship, even though he's not an Esper. Did you wonder why that was possible? Ion is supposed to be omniscient. How could a lone human like you hope to oppose her? Well, that's because she's been operating for over six millennia. Her systems are starting to degrade to the point of inoperability. Are, are you saying the same thing happened to Shiro Yuiga? There are still many secrets in this world, Natsuko. What you know is a mere fraction. Come on. Let's go see Ion. <sighs> hey, Natsuko. Is it okay if we say our goodbyes now? Huh? What are you talking about, Ron? Oh, well, my job's done. Duh. I was only contracted to kill off Shiro Yuiga and the Espers. Yes, your job is done. Leave if you wish. Okay, late. Come on, let's go. What, are you taking Setsu with you? Huh? Why do I have to go? Yeah, why would he want to go with Ron? He's all mad about it, too. Um, uh, someone's gotta fly the plane so I could go home. <laughs> Make your own way home, Ron. Hey, you selfish jerk. Uh, wouldn't that be Natsuiko's ship so you can't really use it without asking him anyway? Or are you just going to allow them to leave? Yes, our relationship was only a business one. Personally, I despise Ron. Well, he did push you off the ship. She'll never forgive him for that. But what were he and Natsuko to each other? They were at least comrades, right? Nope, just business partners. I don't know if I will ever understand them. Sheesh. Finish now. Let's go. This is Ion. Never in my wildest dreams did I expect the world to be a child. 
Natsuiko Azuma, it has been a while. Yes, it has been, what, a decade? You look just the same as you did back then. I am not. Thanks to the explosions you triggered in your attempts to destroy me, my rate of degradation has been somewhat increased. Explosions? Natsuko tried bombing Ion more than once when he was younger. She'd beat him back every time, though. He attempted to destroy the world as a child. I am shocked that he is still alive. I guess this habit of doing the unthinkably rash is one that he had for a long time. Is Shiryuiga truly dead? Yes, that ghost has finally been laid to rest. Ah, oh, if you say so, then it is undoubtedly true. Then, will peace return to the world? With him out of the picture, will there be no more wars? No, humanity will continue to fight, using the weapons Shiroyuiga provided to them. What? But, but why? Because they are human. Once humanity acquires power, it is immensely difficult for them to relinquish it. Are you saying that a lust for power is human nature? Clearly we have proven that time and time again in these four resets. That is not the extent of human nature, no. However, humanity is naturally weak, making greater power seem alluring to some individuals. Then I'll have to stop them. How? Thanks to Shiro Yuiga, there are hundreds of thousands of weapons in circulation now. I've already prepared for that. I originally planned to use this to kill Shiro Yuiga, but it will also allow me to destroy his weapons. Without him around, that just makes things an even simpler task. I know that what Natsuiko has always wanted more than anything is world peace. A peace that is not dependent upon the resets. Ishiro Yuiga's death alone was not enough to bring that peace, then his dreams have not yet been realized. Natsuiko Azuma, you have vehemently opposed the resets ever since you were a small child. What is your reason for that? Because the reset destroys all the culture and knowledge the generations of humanity spent their entire lives creating. I will never condone all of human history being disrespected and discarded like that. So, your assertion is that humanity's decision to perform the first reset in the year 2085 and the decisions to perform all subsequent resets were mistakes? Yes. What alternative course of action would you have pursued then? First of all, I would have made you, Ion, much more powerful. I would increase your control over the world until the threat of your power was enough of a deterrent that none would dare defy you. That is a possibility. I have successfully used my power to rule humans on a national level before. However, in the end, humanity refused to allow themselves to be governed by an inhuman-feeling robot. My form as Ion, which you see before you now, was created as a compromise. I have, in a roundabout fashion, a living soul inside my steel casings. However, when reduced to the simplest form, I am nothing more than a simple switch. A reset button, if you will. Humanity must choose to utilize me. Do you understand, Natsuiko Azuma? A robot is nothing more than a robot. It is well beyond my capabilities to function as a moral compass. Then what do you think we should do? If I don't destroy the weapons Shiro Yuiga has left behind, then who will? Do you wish to be the genesis for the next world war? No! To destroy the weapons means confronting the humans who now own those weapons. You may not wish to call it so, but that will result in war. But... If we ignore them, people will just use them to keep fighting. The same thing will keep happening, over and over again. Thus, the reset. The debate between Atsuko and Ion raged on for a considerable length of time.
Every once in a while, I would hear them use the words robot and switch. They were not words I knew, but I would glean an idea of what they meant from their context. Ion insisted that Natsuiko not interfere. Natsuiko insisted he not stand by idly. How odd. Ion's tone has remained consistently quiet and even, but I am somehow getting the impression that she is angry. She has been right here, in this place, for a very long time. She has even seen every decision the espers have made across millennia. Ion, you have lived on this island for your entire existence, correct? Yes. What do you think is the best course of action? What shall we do to truly stop all the wars? I am a mere robot. Any answer I derive cannot be acceptable to humanity as a whole. I do not know what you mean by saying that you are a robot. I imagine that you are saying that you are something that is not human. But right now you are angry, correct? To me, it seems as if you are saying what you are saying, having given sincere thought to the issue. You may not truly be human, but you obviously care for humanity and the world just as much as we humans do. To truly stop war, humanity must voluntarily abandon its weapons. That is the answer I have come to across 6,000 years of observation. Voluntarily abandoning weapons. But humans have an abject fear of relinquishing power once they have gained it. That is true. If we lose our power, we will not be able to protect the people important to us. But the more power one holds, the more others come to fear them, and that fear is what causes people to desire more power than those around them. Precisely. Thus, the creation and development of weapons continues to advance under the auspices of those in positions of political power. Even though the decision of only one of them to abandon their weapons might be enough to break that cycle. Ion, she was created as the result of too many violent wars. To me, it seemed as if she was saddened that she needed to exist at all. To stop the war, one must first voluntarily give up their power. Natsuiko Azuma, it is you who say that the true nature of humanity is a lust for power. Proof of that lies in the fact that despite your advocacy of the common good, you make no attempt to abandon your own weapons. Ion's voice was as quiet and dispassionate as always, but what she said struck Natsuiko as hard as any of his bullets. Standing near him, I could hear his painfully sharp and take a breath. Natsuiko! I have dedicated my life to following him, it is not my place to say anything about the path he chooses. The one thing I can tell him is... Natsuiko, I will stand with you. Whatever path you choose, I will follow you. Just like I swore to do, remember? <laughs> That's right, you did. You probably will come after me no matter where I go, too. Whether that be a battlefield, or even the depths of hell. Of course! What is the point of me abandoning my weapons? There is no guarantee others will follow suit, but a large enough weapon can be a deterrent. I am not like Shiro Yuiga. I will never use my power for personal gain. I am not like the islanders, who manipulate countries and history to their own whims from the shadows of the world's influence. I... I'm... I just like them, aren't I? Exactly like them. For peace. For humanity. For the future. I thought that was what I was doing all my life, but... Natsuiko! Mikoto, I cannot take you into another battlefield in good conscience. I don't want to put you in any danger. I don't want to risk you getting dragged into that hell. What I want is for you to be happy. In the years since I escaped this island, I had developed and built countless weapons, all meant to be used against the Espers. But you are far more important to me than any of them. I feel the same, Natsuiko. To me, you are far more precious than my powers. 
Now, I can finally see that there is something that can trump power that isn't simply more power. I will abandon my weapons, all of them, for good. Mikoto, it's almost time to depart. Oh, wait, just a moment. Yish, who are you writing a letter to at this time? Your lady mother. Why would you write to my mother? I am apologizing for abandoning you and forcing you to make your way home alone. You don't need... you needn't do that. I'm not some young child trying to walk home at night. <laughs> no, I must. It is only polite. Um, do you have a minute? Hmm? Is it time already? Well, almost. We really should be getting going soon. Ah, I haven't had a chance to say my goodbyes to Masamune yet, though. Er, well, apparently the kitchen is a really big mess right now. Mr. Akito and the others will probably need about half an hour. Ah, uh, I see. I guess that means Heishi and Nanami were in the kitchen again. <laughs> then, I guess I do have a bit more leeway left then. A month had passed since I had arrived on the island. Today, all the espers would be leaving. All of them, that is, except for me, I would be staying for the foreseeable future. He insists there is more research material he needs and will not be budged until he gets it. Goodness, that man can be headstrong. There, I think this should do. Could you please deliver these in my stead? All these letters? Yes, I wrote one to grandfather, to father, to mother, to each of my elder brothers, to aunt and uncle, to great aunt, to your parents, to my instructor, and I think that is it. <laughs> wow! Eesh, you sound like you'd need an entire year to write all your Christmas cards. What a stupid idea! I have a very effective schedule for writing them that begins each October. I always finish in time. Now then, shall we be going? Yes, I'd like a chance to say goodbye to Masamune before leaving. Mr. Masamune is out on the island. We'll see you in half an hour. Yes, thank you. Hmm, I don't see Masamune anywhere. Where could he have gotten to? Heishi and Itsuki did vanish overnight. I would not be surprised if he's off looking for them. True. Goodness, those two. Even after our journey has ended, they still find new ways to inconvenience the rest of us. And unlike us, they haven't returned their powers either. Though I can't see either of them abusing them to any great extent. Well, Itsuki could ba go back to selling his powers. That was right. The nonchalance of Sakuya's words made me realize anew how much had changed. I had given my powers back to Ion. I was no longer an Esper. I was now a former Esper, a normal human being. I am still not completely used to the idea that my powers are no longer there. I guess there is no need for me to continue my training. Why would you give it back? It seems like that would be a good thing to have, even if you don't really need it on a regular basis. I mean, just for things like, you know, Ron showing up randomly. <laughs> what would the old me think of who I am now? I expect she would be upset. No, livid. She would be full of righteous, indignant rage. My barriers were meant to protect human life. That is what I had given my everything to do. But staying with Natsuiko showed me that is untrue. My old ideals do not hold up in battle. Using my powers to protect one side simply means that it is the other side who gets hurt. The more and greater the powers brought to bear in battle, the more difficult it is to extract oneself from the vicious cycle of war. I am sure that a great price will have to be paid for that cycle to finally be broken, perhaps even a price on the scale of a reset. But peace brought about by Esper powers, or yet another reset, is not the kind of future that Natsuiko wants. Choosing either of those means that he and I would have to go back to being enemies. And that I could never do. So, we Espers all decided we would return our powers to Ion. Well, all of us minus Kakeru, who had gone missing, and the escaped Heishi and Itsuki. 
And those two are undoubtedly using theirs to get into mischief. Oh well. Oh, come to think of it, Natsuiko should be in his research lab. Okay, so I'm having to put in another impromptu ending in the middle of a video because I recorded way too long because I had no idea how long Natsuiko's route would be. So I just figured I was going to go for it, go finish the reading, and then divide the video up later. So I'm putting this here, wherever it's going to be. I don't know where it's going to be yet. It's been a while since I've had to do that. Well, wherever this may fall, tune in for the next episode where we'll see Natsuiko's good ending. And this time, it's for sure. It's really going to be as good ending in the next video this time. <laughs> so I hope to see you there or in one of my fu or in some of my future videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.